Each of us are going to talk with a, a summary of what the discussions were for only two minutes. So maybe just 20, 30 minutes until we get to the beer. Sound good? All right. <laughs> okay, so I'm going first, but we were the last one on the list was uh, economic development or uh, economic impact and how do we measure it. So um, we have a lot of things that we would like to measure um, or that we think that could show economic value. I, th I feel really loud in this thing. Is this how everyone else felt today? Okay, good. Um, so growth. So obviously um, across our partners, how do we measure growth? How many, how much more local grains are we using by sector? Um, so that's kind of a no-brainer. Um, at the farmer level, we're talking about acreage. So increases in acreage and or increases in farmer profitability, um, depending on how they measure their own um, economic success or their own, yeah. Um, mitigating climate change came up living wage for employees, job creation, product innovation, are we seeing new products come online as a result of this grain shed? Creating social networks and how do we assign uh, a value to that even though we inherently know it's important, how do we measure that? Um, up and downstream impacts in the value chain and then access to local grains and supermarkets knowing uh, that's where the majority of consumers are buying food every day. Um, we also talked about keeping farmers in farming, right? So um, the, the issue of the dairy decline certainly came up and how do we help those farmers uh, transition if they want to into a profitable enterprise such as grain. Um, farmer retention, human health impact, and then also showing increases in consumer awareness as we talked about today. Um, the consumer doesn't always know about the local grain and or the benefits of it and how do we tell that story successfully and what, how does that relate to economic gains. Um, we talked a little bit about the audience, so who cares about this and knowing that the story we tell might look different for every single one. Um, obviously there's the end all consumer, there's funders, there's the government, there's policy, policy makers, um, folks that are running businesses and are interested in getting into this business, developing new businesses as a result. Um, the hospitality industry, institutions, so the folks that are actually serving the majority of people in some way, shape, or form a meal. Um, we talked about strategic partners. Um, a lot of very small handwriting here. Um, so who's already working in this space? Um, we also talked about how we're going to collect this data, and I think this ties into strategic partners. So who's already collecting certain pieces of the data that we've already talked about, knowing that's a really big lift, all those things that we mentioned? Um, how can we pull that information from them? Who isn't collecting data that we need, and who are those natural partners? So there's trade associations, uh, there's grower associations, there's this new formed collective here, um, and then there's all of the partner institutions that are working with them. So again, who's collecting these points of data, um, what's missing, and how do we develop ways to collect data that's not a tremendous new lift, right? So um, with the absence of being able to do these in-depth economic analyses, which we may not be able to do through this, what data can we collect um, that meets all the members of the supply chain kind of where they're at, but then also tells the story that we're trying to tell. I think I summarized it all. Uh, this is the, be the summary of the the marketing groups um, discussion. It was really a, a kind of a regroup on the presentation that I gave. I think uh, a couple key points that I want to um, raise is you know first it'd be extraordinarily helpful if we had um, a tagline that kind of uh, really quickly encapsulates from a customer perspective about why this matters. Um, some of those reasons that um, why this matters need to speak to um, what customers care about. Uh, uh, can we make things that are experiential and aspirational, relatable at the human level? Um, can we show them the, you know, those thousand moments of, of uh, incredible beauty that occur? Um, we have to understand um, the, the full journey as to what happens from farmer's intention all the way to the, the finished uh, slice of bread or, or, um, or a glass of beer. Um, one of the uphill challenges that we have with, with malt and grain, um, particularly as it relates to beer and spirits, um, is there a significant enough 
uh, flavor impact and contribution that kind of meets the level of differentiation that I think we do find in uh, bread and baked goods, like locally, locally sourced, freshly milled, uh, kind of properly fermented in, in baked breads. It does feel like there's a big um, differentiator there, but less so for other, um, other value-added products. Um, however, there's still certainly opportunities there. I think it just might be a little bit more difficult. So it really does come, come back to the storytelling uh, elements. Um, we had, uh, I, I have a quote down here, grain is the soul of, and I, and I originally wrote farm because that's what was said, but it's the soul of the land, uh, the farmer, the bread, the beer, and you. So I, I kind of just wrote that down. So maybe it can kind of be, be evolved into um, a, a more in-depth storytelling, you know, 60 second short video that kind of carries that story all the way through um, to the to the a family sitting around a table um, having having a meal or something like that. Um, I think what um, also came through is it feels like it's an opportunity consuming uh, and growing and brewing with and distilling with uh, local grain. It feels like you're doing good for others and, and yourself. So how do we capture that concept in, in the communication methods will be important. Um, I also want to talk about some of the potential pitfalls and some of the kind of things that we might trip on and be aware of um, or meet head on and, and charge right at and, and blast right through. So. Um, wheat and gluten has been vilified, so how do we kind of crack, crack through that? Um, is there um, going to be any concerns around, well you keep talking about local, why, why don't you have, why, why isn't um, farming organically important enough to you? So like how do you, how do you kind of close that communication gap? Um, is there going to be a dilution of the messaging um, over and over again? Um, yeah, so it's really about um, planning for and budgeting time for capturing um, all these uh, all these moments and telling the uh, a more complete story. Uh, don't just say it's made with local grain. We got to tell the story um, and being thoughtful and cognizant of that and partner with the rest of the supply chain to be able to tell that because um, the the end product user uh, producers tend to have the vast majority of the eyeballs. So how do we, how do we include the full supply chain in that storytelling, story not just write something up and post it without involving those folks in that conversation. Hey, took a, take a look at this, or can you send me a picture of, tell me, tell me something beautiful that happens that I don't even, I'm not even aware. Tell me things that matter. So um, just a quick kind of uh, brainstorm session on the uh, elements to consider with um, uh, marketing planning for the Northeast Green Shed. Thank you. We had a pretty lively discussion in the variety testing group. Um, lots of uh, ideas, suggestions. Um, the focus really came around to how do we uh, produce a large enough amount of, of barley or wheat to do pilot scale testing and uh, uh, in, the, in the case of the brewing um, we send micro samples to Aaron and to the Madison lab, the USDA lab but that's just very very small scale. We also have a uh, brewing lab in uh, Geneva, New York, Cornell Agritech Brewing uh, Lab, and that will um, br uh, brew batches as small as uh, maybe 20 kilos, 20, 25 kilos. But that's kind of a, still a very, very small scale. And we were really focused on trying to figure out how we could get to the next level, which is producing uh, enough for pilot scale testing in a malt house and a, brew house, and a brewing uh, house. So um, one of the suggestions by Christian uh, was uh, uh, to come up with a, 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 a quantity that would be um, the amount that would fit on a pallet, which is a, about uh, like a tote, uh, 30, 40 bushels. That's about the maximum amount that I can produce. It's the amount uh, that apparently you can ship fairly inexpensively from other parts of the country. Um, and that's the, an amount that could produce 20 acres or so and uh, be adequate volume to um, 
uh, run a batch through a malt house and a, brew and a brewing house. Um, Gary took much more copious notes than I did. He can fill in some gaps there and then I'll talk about the bread. Well, just uh, I think we did take a little bit of uh, cue from what the cooperative work going on with a number of the, the bakers, where, where the, the story there is that they have settled on a particular formula for sourdough bread and, and everything standardized from the baking, the handling, everything all the way through. And it seems like that model could be followed uh, for barley and other things uh, for you know having a, a, a certain protocol. And of course, we're really talking about it's not just taking a pallet of grain and growing it on different farms and comparing the effect of the that, that genotype that variety by the growing situation but it's also a factorial because you're going to take it through a malting process and then a brewing process so you're going to have to have some standardization on, on each of those steps if you're going to be able to compare varieties consistently over years um, so I think those are, I think you hit the main points there. I just had a couple of uh, points on, uh, on the red side of things. Green market and particular varieties that we want to compare and use uh, standardized baking tests on those. Okay, I think that's about all we have. I think part of it's going to be determined by the volunteers that come forward at each of those levels. Uh, you know, farms, bakeries, distilleries, breweries, malt houses, how many people really want to be involved. And, and then whether you're self-assessing for that or if there's some kind of grant funding or some other funding, if it possibly be a function of the, of the grain shed program. But uh, it, it's going to take uh, money for seed, for use of land, and, and all the way through the processing. So it, uh, there has to be some prioritization in that. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, our group was challenged to talk about green shed events. Um, so it seemed overwhelmingly that um, our group wanted to focus on how we could standardize or create a toolkit for people to use in lots of small ways um, across the whole grain shed. So as opposed to trying to do one big festival, um, doing lots of little events and maybe fitting discussion um, or activities about the grain shed into someone else's event. So one of the key things we talked about was um, trying to send out a survey at the conclusion of this um, symposium so we can get a handle on what the assets of this group already are. So what events are already happening at your mill or your malt house or your state fair um, that we could kind of shoehorn the Northeast Grain Shed discussion into um, and then creating a, uh, a toolkit for people so they can design an event uh, within their things that are already happening locally. Um, with the key really being that these events are really consumer facing, very hands on, um, and for kind of smaller groups of maybe 20 to 40 people to really dig deep um, into the idea of what's going on through the supply chain in their local grain shed. I think the spirit behind that, and oh, I would guess I'm sort of preaching to the choir, is that the, the large festival with the tiny sample is kind of an old, it's old hat. It's kind of not that much fun for us as much as it used to be. It's certainly not as educational for the consumer. It's not really driving home what we're trying to perform here with educating and talking about the grain shed. I. I, I, sort of, I think one of the parts of, that struck me was this ability to really have, a, have face time with each individual or at least each group that is interested in learning more about what we're trying to do, which is use more local grains in our products. Um, made me think about the challenge part, um, but yeah. So uh, one topic came up about having kind of like a, you know, mimicking the food show challenge uh, for bakers where there's a, you know, a group of, of like these great bakers that come together and that here's your, here's your flour, here's your fruit, here's your whatever that you're using, uh, here's the beer that's going to go with it hopefully too, or spirit, and then uh, and they bake something and then there's this crowd of people that, that have uh, probably both paid to be there and also are, are, are encouraged 
uh, to be there for the purpose of educating them to learn as a consumer. And so uh, I just think that's a really fun idea. Uh, but I love cooking shows. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we talked about a mission statement and we spent most of our time talking about the process of what we were going to do because we want this to be not something that comes from a few people. We have one sentence to start with and we have a bunch of words that we want to invite you to add to. This is really going to be an organization that serves everyone. So part of the post-conference, post-event uh, deal is you're going to get invited to participate as you like. So far the words include communication, science, marketing, education, carbon footprint, transparency, sustainability, small words, um, and old eyes, but awareness, relationships, community, resiliency, access, action, inclusion, rejuvenation, collaboration, mindfulness, care, health, justice, equality, equity, equitable markets, nurture, diligence, quality of life, conviviality, which we're about to have, thriving environment. The one sentence that we did settle on is the Northeast Grain Shed supports a sustainable grains ecosystem in the Northeast. So I want to ask you all to help us fill in the rest of the blanks. Okay, we were the governance um, group and so I'll keep this short and sweet. We had a really good discussion. We realize there's a lot of excitement today, great ideas and really great momentum. So we want to take that and go into planning the governance with a lot of intention and thought. Um, and a lot of the governance structure will be determined by our mission. Um, what are we trying to do? What do we want to do? So we're going to let that drive the structure. We want to create an advisory board with representatives of each member of the grain chain. We want to invite everybody to the table for this conversation because if we want to maintain a grassroots feel, we have to include everybody from the get-go. Um, we want to think about maybe keeping some of these groups that were created today. Obviously you guys are interested in whatever table you attended. Um, we could create subcommittees or groups, uh, people that are interested in each of these topics to move forward so that we can um, include that intention and thought in how we decide to govern the Northeast Grain Shed. Uh, we talked about funding a little bit. Um, possibilities could be through membership, sponsors, and then including small donations from the masses. It's really important, again, to keep the grassroots uh, feel of this group by um, including everybody, the big money makers and the small money makers, because we don't want the, um, the money to drive our mission or our governance structure. We want everyone to have an equal voice, so. Um, we also want to throw out the question, what models do you guys recommend? Um, if you want to answer that in the poll that was sent out, that would be really helpful. Let's tap into the resources that we have here today. We have, we're covering the whole spectrum of the grain chain here. Um, let's get our ideas and let's, let's use the knowledge that we have and uh, look at some models of really successful groups that are already doing great things instead of reinventing the wheel. Um, and another thought um, as far as funding goes that's a little more specific is looking into a local food promotion program grant. Um, it's a USDA grant. If we could maybe get a planning grant to help us uh, fund uh, future meetings to talk about our governance, um, that would allow people like bakers or brewers who can't get the day off of work to be funded for their um, time to attend these meetings and um, give us their valuable input. Thank you. for talking about uh, pledging and accountability. So um, one of the things, one of the major topics we discussed at the table was keeping the Northeast Grain Shed brand value very high by making sure that everyone involved has reached a certain amount of pledging or contracting and also uh, able to get transparency on that as June mentioned as they do in the green market so um, 
I think some of the carrots out here are being able to attend events like this, putting the North East Grain Shed uh, logo on your business or on a product, um, going to festivals or uh, markets that are set up through the Northeast Grain Shed. But in order to do that, we're going to have to have some th sort of third party accountability to make sure that everybody involved is living up to their end of it. So um, how that's done, I think, is a question what threshold needs to be met as far as a pledge or um, being a, a part of the grain shed by buying or using or producing a certain amount has to be discussed. Um, and that's going to come through feedback from membership and eventually some sort of governing board. So um, there's details to be discussed, but I think the idea of the nomine de Appalachian or the Neapolitan uh, certification is keep the brand value high so that everyone wants to be a part of it by making sure there's no one uh, that's disingenuous to the cause as a part of it and uh, we'll get more members that want to be a part of it and the value of using it or being a, a member of this group is there and uh, it'll go forward and get stronger and bigger as we go. So some questions to be answered, but uh, that's what we came up with. So we had a uh, grain shed tools and we are all here on a mission faced business or mission focused business. So they are tools that we created that kind of overlap with everybody else's segment. Tools that will uh, help with accountability, with marketing, with measuring uh, all the things that we're doing. So there's kind of two areas. One that drives demand that's customer focused, uh, that we can use to help get customers, get uh, show people that grain is sexy. Um, a clickable map that is searchable, that uh, allows for people to find producers, bakers, brewers, distillers, who are using local grains uh, and making those connections. Uh, some of the production-based ones, uh, kind of piggybacking off of platforms that we all know and use, like a grain shed Craigslist for equipment, uh, you know, want ads and both, I have this, would you like to come use it stuff. Uh, a grain shed wiki that has what grains uh, are popular, what information, kind of a, a way to aggregate all the information that is out there, not only on production values, but case studies of, all right, this is a grain, this is where it grows well, this is when it's available, and then here are three bakeries that have used it in their bread, and here is how their marketing campaigns. Because for a, a small bakery, uh, even small regional local breweries, uh, it's not going to get huge. Um, you're not going to step on too many toes sharing some of the successful marketing campaigns, but a way to kind of aggregate all of that information. Um, a manual to go with the square foot calculator. So it's not only that we have the calculator, but how do you use it to derive that information? So now you have a four square foot number. But then information on what do you then do with that? How do you tell that story uh, to go with it? And so <clears throat> there was a square foot calculator and then a CO2 calculator that uh, by buying local and producing things locally, you're not shipping it across the United States. You're not flying it in from other countries. You've reduced your carbon footprint. And right now, as the world is changing, that is something that we can, uh, I hate to say capitalize on, but uh, it's, uh, it's been a long day. Um, <clears throat> those were some of the things that we came up with. Uh, then Andrea asked me to say a few words in closing remarks. Uh, my name is John. I'm from Kent Falls Brewing Company. I am the farm and the farm brewery to Barry's Brewery. Um, when I walked in today, and uh, everybody else was walking in, I was talking to Aaron McLeod, and he was like, look at around this room. Look at all these different people. We have brewers, we have distillers, we have people in here, there. All these people are here for the same reason. What's that reason? I was like, well, that's, that's the heart of it. We're all here for the same reason. Everybody came here today. They woke up, probably in a bed. Uh, they woke up and walked out the door to come to this event. And that's amazing. You took an action. Um, <clears throat> when you woke up, that was your mission. That's something that's not going to change. You were driven to be here. Uh, and for us, for me, that mission is that quality of life comes from healthy soils. Everything that we do, all the different facets uh, in this room, we could probably all bring it down to healthy soils. So that's what our mission is, that's not going to change. 
then when you take your step out that door, your commitment is going to change based off of different resources, time, money, manpower, experience. That's going to be different for each of us. Some of us can do it at scale. Some of us are scaling up. Some of us are just like, what is this green thing all about? I don't know. Maybe I'll try it out. So uh, I, have the, uh, I have the pleasure of being dad to two daughters who are home right now. My six-year-old is very opinionated. We have spent a lot of time working with her to differentiate between what is a boss and what is a leader. A boss tells you what to do and a leader shows you what to do. Now my request of you would be that don't be a boss and tell people why your mission is great. Be a leader like Andrea and show us why our mission is great. Thanks.